Pony Sports. On Vax TV. Hello and good evening. Welcome. We're so glad you could join us here at Valley Access where we have the, the Stillwater Ponies are hosting the Creighton Durham Raiders for a wonderful dual meet between two teams. Should be a really good matchup. I'm Jill Chow. I'm your announcer for the evening. They called me a color announcer commentator. I'm going to try and keep the color to a minimum. It's a family show. But we want to thank Valley Access for giving us the opportunity to broadcast to you here tonight so we can watch these wonderful athletes in progress. We're going to get to the meet in just a second. I want to take a moment just to thank John and June Christofferson of Papa John's of Stillwater Pizza. They have been sponsoring all of the ponies' athletic events on Valley Access, and what a treat for us pony fans to be able to watch all of our athletes do wonderful things throughout the community. Thanks again, June and John. We are going to be getting ready for the meet. This is going to be a great matchup. Um, Stillwater is hosting Crete and Derm. We're going to get right into it. Here we go. We're off and ready already with our first event. This is the 200-yard medley relay. We have two relays in the water, just so happens to be the JV event. Both teams are um, from Stillwater. In lane one, we have Jack DuPaul swimming backstroke. I'm sorry, not lane one. Lane three, we have Jack DuPaul swimming backstroke. And lane five is Noah Danker. The medley relay is swam in a different, in a different, um, order than the IM coming up soon. Both those guys are touching the wall and giving way. Jonathan Stanton is in the water in lane three and Jack Howell in lane four. Breaststroke is next. In the, in the medley relay we go backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, and freestyle. As you can imagine it's a little troubling to try and do a back start over top of someone in the water. That's why we do a different order than for the individual medley. Both of these guys are breaststrokers. Jonathan and Jack doing a great job here. They are going to give way to Jackson Avery in lane three. Jackson's an eighth grader. And Cooper in lane four, Cooper Wanderer, is also an eighth grader. Doing some butterfly here. I have a good feeling that Stillwater is going to win this JV, this JV event. So I apologize to those of you at home. Obviously, I'm not a professional broadcaster. I'm going to let you pause for a second to relieve your shock. Um, but like you, many of you watching at home, I'm a proud parent. These athletes have worked so hard. This is a tough part of the season. They have to dig in deep and keep going. The last leg of our, of our relay here, Lincoln Wanderer is in the lane three. He's swimming freestyle. And Peter Severson just hit the water in lane five, four. Might also be helpful to note that your broadcaster cannot count lanes. They are in lane three and four, crushing it, getting all the cobwebs out at the beginning top of the broadcast. Nice job, Stillwater JV Relay A finishing up there with 214.76. Stillwater B finishing 223.18. Our next event will be the Varsity heat of the 200 yard medley. Here we're gonna have three relays in the water. Lane, lane three um, is a still water relay. In the water is gonna be Sam Loken, Jackson Benson, Zach Cody, and Joey Reiner. Lane four is gonna be a Creton Durham Hall relay, starting off with Will Larson, Finn Doherty, John Kovetz, and Eli. I'm gonna get your name right, Eli. Wachlarowitz. I'm going to give that a try again. Sorry, Eli, I'm going to do my best. Um, and then in lane five, we've got a Stillwater relay. Wyatt Fredine, Jaden Peterson, Nathan Browning, and Nathan Volkman. And they're off. The interesting thing about this meet tonight that I've noticed, both coaches have kind of mixed up their entrance tonight. 
some of these guys are swimming events that they don't typically swim, which is exciting for parents and it's exciting for the swimmers. It's a little troubling for the broadcaster because I can't tell you what how their times usually are, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it and and hope for the best. Touching the wall first, there is Wyatt Fredeen of Stillwater for Stillwater A. Followed up. Stillwater B touched the wall. That was Sam and Will. Next in the water, swimming breaststroke, lane three, Jackson Benson. In lane four for Creton Durham is Finn Doherty. And in lane five is Jaden Peterson. Jaden gives way there to Nathan Browning in the water, lane five, Stillwater A. And now entering the water in lane three is Zach Cody. And John Kovetz enters the water for Butterfly. This is gonna be a fast finish. All three of these guys up doing freestyle. In the water right now, Joey Reiner. Just about to see Nathan Volkman jump in in lane three. And Eli is heading into the water, lane four for Creton Durham. Looks like Stillwater's got, Stillwater A has got this pretty handily, finishing up right there with a 148.74. Stillwater B will take second, and Creton Durham scoring points in third place. Might be interesting to know that the scoring for relays, only three relays can score. So we only have three in the water right now, so all three got points. Um, just making sure, all three. Let me read those times there. Um, Stillwater B, 158.22, and Creton Durham, 207.06. Our next event is 200 freestyle verse. I'm sorry, looks like we're doing Typically, these meets are set up where um, for each event there are two heats. There's a JV heat and followed by a varsity heat. However, when we have fewer swimmers in the pool, we can sometimes combine both of those. This looks like one of those combinations. All right, lane one, swimming for Stillwater, Cooper Larson. Lane two for Creton Durham, Will Larson. Lane three for Stillwater, Paul Hartman. Lane four, Matt Bomberger for Creton Durham. Lane five, Jackson Kogler of Stillwater. Lane six, Jack Kirschberg of Creton Durham. And lane seven, Bodie Schaefer of Stillwater. And lane eight, Thomas Putnam of Stillwater. This is gonna be a really fun matchup. Watch lanes four and five here. Matt Baumgartner and Jackson Kogler, both exceptional swimmers. Both had really good meets coming off of maroon and gold this past weekend. Matt is an excellent swimmer from Creton Durham. He's fun to watch. I haven't seen him swim the 200 before. That looks a little like maybe it's a, an event he's not typically swimming. But um, I think he swims it at about a 154. Took a second to find an older meet where he swam at. 154 is a very amazing time. Jackson Kogler, also someone who doesn't always swim this event, um, but he usually gets that in at a 149. So this is going to be a fun matchup between these two. These guys have probably also swam against each other other in other times, not just this is our first dual meet, um, but they both swim clubs. They might have seen each other in action at club meets outside of the high school season. Nice splits there for Matt and Jackson. Paul, I'm sorry, in, it is Kirschberg in, in third place from Creighton Durham, followed by Paul Hartman. He's in fourth place right now. 200 is such a grueling race. You have to be smart and strategic. Look at that. Nice finish there. They went so fast. <laughs> Ran out of stuff. 149.50, Jackson, Jackson Kogler of Stillwater came in first, followed very closely by Baumberger of Creighton Durham in second place with 
Hirschberg did a nice job. Third place, 203.68, and fourth place goes to Paul Hartman, 206.19. You may have noticed we have an extra still, still water swimmer in the water. If there are empty lanes, coaches have the option to swim a swimmer exhibition. So that is a nice opportunity for some kids to get some experience in an event they might not normally swim. Fifth place goes to Larson of Creighton Durham, 224.11. Sixth place to Schaefer of Stillwater, 226.08. Cooper Larson from Stillwater. Seventh place, 234.45. And finishing up in lane eight here, we have Thomas Putnam, one of the Stillwater Ponies captains. He's been on the team for six years, loves the sport, and is a great leader. Nice job. Three minutes, 25. We are off and running. This is a fast meet. We're ready for the 200-yard IM. Looks like this is going to be another combined event. No JV heat. We've got all, we've got seven lanes filled. In lane one, Jackson Benson of Stillwater. Lane two, Owen Sargent of Creton Durham. Zach Cody's in lane three of Stillwater. Finn Doherty of Creton Durham in lane four. Lane five, Wyatt Fredine of Stillwater. Lane six, Marcus Simmons of Creton Durham, and lane seven, Sam Moken of Stillwater. This is gonna be fun to watch. A lot of these guys don't typically swim this, although watch watch Wyatt Ferdine. He's he's an exceptional swimmer, and just about anything you throw him in the pool for, he can do it. He's very strong as you can see, he's out really quick in the butterfly. He's got just about a three yard lead already in the butterfly. Um, typically, we might even see Matt Baumberger from Creton and Jackson Kogler, both of whom swam this event at the meet on set, the invitation on Saturday, both did an excellent job. We're on to the backstroke. As promised in the individual medley, the IM, they do a different order. It's butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle, white, of Stillwater, got a nice size lead. Second place right now is Zach Cody of Stillwater. Although um, Marcus Simmons is right in it. And Sam right next to Marcus. Pretty sizable lead now, Wyatt Ferdine out about 10 yards in front of Zach Cody. Zach is a new swimmer to the Ponies this year. Excellent flyer. Looking forward to seeing what this ninth grader can do. We're also really grateful to have Wyatt Ferdine back with us. He swam as a younger swimmer, took a couple of years break to continue with club team, and look at him go. We're lucky to have him back. He's going to touch the wall and come into freestyle as he finishes up. It's still neck and neck. We've got... We've got Marcus and Sam Loken kind of battling it out for third and fourth. Finn Doherty, not too far behind. Although look at, look at Jackson Benson catching up in lane one. Jackson is a breaststroker. I'm not surprised he caught up in the end. Wyatt touching the wall in an impressive 201.73. I'm sorry, 206.89. Boy, can you tell I'm not a pro? 20689, nice job, Wyatt. Looks like Zach is going to easily get that second place. Oh, it's going to be a fun finish for third, fourth. Nice job, Zach, 22698. And wow, Sam Loken of Stillwater just out touched Simmons of Creton Durham. Sam 23202, and Simmons of Creton Durham 23218. That was close. Fourth place. Third and fourth, fifth place went to Jackson Benson. Sixth to Doherty of Creighton Durham, and Sargent takes seventh place. Nice job, gentlemen. Next event coming up. This is the fast one. It's fun to watch. Um, this is going to be JV 50 freestyle. 
I may have a correction. Oh, there was a disqualification. I apologize, she switched the uh, switched the screen too quick there, but there was quite a bit of a change up there. We're moving on here to 50, 50 free. This is a JV heat. Lane two, Nick Larson. Lane three, Noah Danker. Lane four, Carl Steinhoff. Lane five, Peter Severson. Lane six, Lincoln Wander. Lane seven, Jonathan Stanton. I have a house full of swimmers, and everybody tells me they want to do the 50. I don't think it's because of a particular passion for the 50, but because it is, in fact, the shortest and over very quickly. But it's a very strategic event. You have to have a really good start. You have to have good underwaters. You have to have a really snappy flip turn. And so there's a lot more that goes into it than just swimming fast and getting up. Nicely done. Looks like. Um, Stanton took first with 29.59. Second goes to Danker with 30, 33. Third place to Wanderer. Fourth place to Severson. Fifth place to Steinhoff of Creighton Durham. And sixth grade to Larson. We are getting ready for the varsity heat of 50 yard freestyle. Lane two, Nate Lieber. Lane three, Nathan Browning. Lane four, John Kovetz. Lane five, Cameron Winters. Lane five, Eric Van Oosterum. And lane seven, Jack DePaul. <laughs> Swimmers have options to dive off of the block or start in the water. They are off. This one is going to be a close one to call. A couple of ponies out front. Creighton Durham not giving it up. They're all in it. It does look like Cameron first, Nathan Browning second, third goes to Van Oosterum, fourth to Kovats, fifth to DePaul. Nate Lieber is a really fun swimmer to watch. He is not only an amazing athlete for Creighton Durham, he does swim for Paralympics. And just watch this kid. He's going places. Nice job, sixth place. There for Nate, his time 47.19. Okay, believe it or not, that wraps up the first half of our of our meet already. So we're gonna take a quick break while they switch it up. Our next event is diving. We have three divers from Stillwater um, and they're gonna set up the pool and take care of diving and we will show all of the diving. Um, as soon as they get set up, we're gonna take a quick break.
Mr. Dennis McDump. Two more times. Come on. It is just an unbelievable experience and advantage that we're giving to kids. see the Papa John's Corporation and think we're this big company. Uh, this is my wife and I. This is our one and only store. We're here working seven days a week. It doesn't really get much more mom and pop than that. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. People see the Papa John's Corporation and think we're this big company. Uh, this is my wife and I. This is our one and only store. We're here working seven days a week. It doesn't really get much more mom and pop than that.
Lance Flynn. Awards. Seven, eight, seven. Grady starts our fourth round with dive 401C. Dive tuck one four on deck is Kubitschek. Awards. Five and one half, four and one half, five. Macon, 202C, a back one somersault, tuck one five on deck Sorensen. Awards. Four and one half, five, five. Tate, dive 303C, a reverse, one and one half somersault, tuck to one. On deck is Flynn. Award. Six and one half, excuse me, six, six, six. Grady starts our fifth round with dive 402C and inward one somersault, tuck one six. Kubitschek and deck. Awards. Four and one half, four and one half, four and one half. Macon, his fifth dive is 402C and inward one somersault, tuck one six, and deck is Sorensen. Okay, Macon, his fifth dive is 402C and inward one somersault, tuck one six, Adeka Sorensen. Awards. Four and one half, five, five and one half. Tate, dive 105C, a forward, two and one half, somersault, tuck, two, four. On deck is Flynn. Awards. 
seven, six, six and one half. We're starting our final round. Grady's final dive is 5122D, a forward one somersault, one twist free, one nine on Dekas Kubicek. Awards. Five, four, four. Macon's final dive is 5121D, a forward one somersault, one half twist free, one seven on Decca Sorensen. Awards. Three and one half, three and one half, four. Tate's final dive, 5231D, a back one and one half somersault, one half twist, free, two one. Awards. Six, five and one half, five and one half. This concludes one meter diving. There will be a 10 minute water break. Feet first, entry please. Hey, are we? We're just gonna stay off. The pool is open. Okay, guys. Just wanted to make sure. Sounds good. Yeah, a little panic. Um, and I realized that one of the things that I could improve on is just making sure I don't wait until you tell me you're off. Um, well, people see so Papa John's I'll Corporation and think we're this big company. Uh, so this is my wife and I. This is our one and only store. We're here working seven days a week. It doesn't really get much more mom and pop than that. Dennis McDump. Two more times. Come on.
collecting some kind of a basin up here. It is just an unbelievable experience and advantage that we're giving to kids. People see the Papa John's Corporation and think we're this big company. Uh, this is my wife and I. This is our one and only store. We're here working seven days a week. It doesn't really get much more mom and pop than that. What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. People see the Papa John's Corporation and think we're this big company. Uh, this is my wife and I. This is our one and only store. We're here working seven days a week. It doesn't really get much more mom and pop than that.
Mr. Dennis McDump. Two more times. Come on. He's going to collect in some kind of a basin up here. It is just an unbelievable experience and advantage that we're giving to kids. People see the Papa John's Corporation and think we're this big company. Uh, this is my wife and I. This is our one and only store. We're here working seven days a week. It doesn't really get much more mom and pop than that. believe in patriotism. We believe in our nation's youth. They said we I couldn't believe drink. veterans earn their benefits through their service to our nation. Trash and swore we that's believe all I'd ever in a strong national security. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion, the and we believe it makes a difference. If you believe, learn more at legion.org slash we believe. Give up. We believe. About a Stillwater win in that event. We had three Stillwater divers. I think she might actually be just announcing announcing the results. If not, we will get to those those two as soon as we can. We're going to be getting back into the second half of the swimming portion of the meet. We're going to be start. We're going to be starting with a hundred butterfly. It looks like we do not have a JV heat once again here so we're just going to run a, a varsity a varsity heat of 100 fly lane three is joey reiner lane four eli wakalerowitz oh, okay i'm going to get this right by the end of the meet eli sorry about that lane five jaden peterson and lane seven zach cody once again i don't believe that there is going to be a jv heat of this event just varsity i don't want you to read into the fact that this does not appear to be a popular event with the guys on these two teams. I always tell all my swimmers, there's always a fourth favorite event, and it does tend to be butterfly, but if you can do it right, it's amazing. You're gonna see a couple. We are clapping loudly for something. It might be the start of this heat. You're gonna see some impressive swims. Like I said, um, Mr. Luke in particular, uh, the ponies coach has mixed it up a little bit. I know that Joey, Jaden, and Zach don't always, Zach is a great flyer. He's he's our, one of our typical flyers, but you're gonna see some interesting swims here. Right out of the chute. Jaden is in the lead, but followed very closely by Joey. Both are excellent freestylers, and sometimes that does translate. Eli in fourth place, and Zodi, in, er, Zodi. There's a contraction. Everybody told me to make up nicknames for the swimmers. Maybe I'll do that. Zodi, that's you. Zach Cody, you're Zodi. All right, touching in first at that 50 was Jaden, followed by Joey, Zodi, and Eli. 
as you can see, it's an extremely difficult swim, <laughs> stroke to swim. There is a lot of technique and timing with this. You, um, you have to have immense upper body strength to do that pull, and you only do two butterfly kicks for each pull, so you're really using a lot of upper body strength. And it looks like Jaden is finishing in first, 56-54, excellent time. Joey did a great job in second, 58-29, followed by Zodi. You're never gonna live that down, buddy. 104-09, great times. And Eli finishing us up here. As he touches the wall, nice job, Eli. Looks like we're gonna have to get a time. They're gonna call for a watch time on lane four. It looks like the pad didn't quite register his finish there, but um, some other things to consider when you're swimming butterfly, those of you wanna try this at home, you gotta keep those knees together and equal distance, or equally together. Don't wanna get disqualified after doing an entire hundred of butterfly, I can promise you that. Next up, we have a 100-yard freestyle. This is the JV heat. Uh, lane two is Jack Howell of Stillwater. Lane three is Liam Chow. He is, sorry, he's my favorite swimmer in this meet. You might figure out why. Lane four, Nate Lieber. Lane five, Alex Lauer. Lane six, John Richardson. Cretan Darum is in lane four with Nate. The rest are all pony swimmers. Getting ready. for the 100, and they're in the water. Already off to a great start is Jack Howell in lane two. Looks like he's pulling nicely into the lead. Followed by, let's see, uh, John Richardson, lane six. Looks like he's got second. Third is Alex Lauer. Look at those seventh graders go. Alex and John, lanes five and six are both seventh graders. That's impressive showing there. We've got Liam just trailing Alex, and then Nate just behind Liam. Nice job. Jack had a nice split on that 134, 74. John split 40, 59. Alex had a split of 44, 37. Liam, 48, 62. And Nate, nice, 48, 53. Nate is catching up to Liam. This is gonna be a good race between these two. Nate is pulling ahead of Liam just a little bit here. Looks like Jack Howell is gonna finish first in this JV 100 heat pretty handily. Nice job, let's see what his time ends up. 113.82, nice job, Jack. Watching lane six, John Richardson. Probably gonna finish in that second spot. There we go, 128.47 for John. Alex finishing strong, 134.28. And Nate, whoo, Nate really pulled ahead to grab that fourth place spot. Nice job, Nate. 145.76. One of my favorite things about this sport is how both teams cheer really loudly for everybody. Everybody knows the amount of effort that goes into this sport. And it's just incredible, the camaraderie between the athletes, doesn't matter which team they're on. They shake hands, you notice, look at that sportsmanship. They stay in the water, you may not know that, they stay in the water to just make sure that everybody feels, they don't exit the water until the last swimmer's finished. And I think that's a really honorable and polite tradition. I love that about swimming. Next up, we have the varsity 100 yard. Lane two is Will Larson of Creighton Durham. Lane three, Paul Hartman of Stillwater. Lane four, Finn Doherty of Creighton Durham, Nathan Volkman of Stillwater is in lane five, Carl Steinhoff, lane six for Creighton Durham, and lane seven, Jackson Avery. Interesting to note that in this varsity heat, we have one 12th grader, our, our senior captain, Nathan Volkman, um, wonderful leader for our team, and I'm seeing a lot of juniors and an eighth grader and a ninth grader. We have a lot of young talent on both of these teams. Off they go. Look at those starts. You can start to see as they, the guys hit the varsity level. Look at those amazing starts where they really explode off the block. That's so important for a sprint like the 100. It's, it's important for all of them, let's be honest, but seconds count when we're talking sprints. The 50 and the 100 for sure. Looks like Nathan Volkman is taking an early lead here. He's got just a few yards. 
on teammate Paul Hartman. Nice splits for both those guys. 25-83 for Nathan, 27-17 for Paul. Coming out of the turn, it looks like Nathan in first, Paul in second. Going to be a little bit more of a dogfight for third. We have two Cretan Durham swimmers battling it out, but don't discount Avery Jackson, our eighth grader, coming up in lane six here. He's putting on the speed, too. We have Carl in lane six, battling it out, kicking it in. Nice job. First place goes to Nathan Volkman, 53-41. Second place to Stillwater, Paul Hartman, 55-58. Third place to Will Larson of Cretan. Fourth place to Finn of Cretan. Fifth place to Jackson Avery. That was close. And Carl rounds us off with sixth place. Coming up, 500 yard freestyle. Where it looks like we're gonna have two heats of this. We're gonna have the JV swimmers. I'm gonna read those out for you. Cooper Larson in lane three. These are all Stillwater swimmers. Cooper Larson, lane three. Bodie Schaefer, lane four. Cooper Wanderer, lane five. Lincoln Wanderer, lane six. And Nick Larson, lane seven. This is the JV. 500. These are all pony swimmers, and this is going to be kind of fun for me, maybe less fun for them, but I don't believe, I'm trying to remember, I don't believe any of these guys have swum the 500 yet this season. We're going to have a second here. The official asked them to stand. It looks like somebody was wobbling on the... Typically when when our starter asks someone to s the, the heat to stand up, it looks like someone was kind of wobbling a little bit on the block. That's why they have them stand up so everybody can catch their balance, get a fresh start. Definitely don't want a false start, especially in something as long as the 500. It would not be fun to do all that work and effort and end up with a disqualification. I always try and tell my swimmers that DQs are learning and experiences, but they don't really believe me. They do perk up a little bit when I tell them DQ also stands for Dairy Queen. I don't think the parents like that quite as much. Um, but who doesn't like a good Dairy Queen? So you may notice at the end of the pool here, everybody's got counters. Um, that's an important job. There's nothing harder than trying. I think the 200 is actually harder than the 500 because you got to keep a really good count of what you've, how many how many laps you've swum. Um, so the counters are are giving the guys an idea of how many they've got, how many in, how many they've got to go. Um, the worst thing you can do as a counter is drop that in the pool. I'm not trying to jinx it, it won't happen today, but my least favorite time that that happened was at the U of M, and that poor counter was so embarrassed. Dropped in the pool, she had to jump in and, and get it. She was not pleased. Anyway, everybody's doing a nice job here. Looks like, looks like Bodie and Cooper are doing a nice job pacing each other. They're teammates. That can sometimes help you if you're not as experienced in an event like this. You kind of find somebody that you know during practice, you spend a lot of time with them. You know, I know his pace, I know he can keep up with them. That sometimes can backfire because you never know if somebody's just got a lot left in the tank and might leave you in the dust at the end. But when you're new to this, as a lot of these guys, I believe are moms, dads, I'm sorry if they've done this a lot and I just haven't registered that. Um, but it's, it's hard to know how to pace yourself until you've done this before. So a lot of, when I get some of these, some of these splits, we've got Bodie and Cooper pacing each other nicely. I should say, I'm sorry, Cooper Wanderer. We have a couple Coops in the pool. Cooper Larson is coming in third, flipping right there. And then pacing each other pretty nicely, we've got Lincoln Wanderer, Cooper's brother, and Nick Larson. So like I said, it is a nice strategy to kind of pace along with somebody you know. We don't want that to backfire at the end of the race, but that can make it fun for the spectators too. You'll see a nice tight race at the, at the end of a 500. So different strategies with more experience. We'll see some more experienced swimmers in the Varsity 500, and that'll be fun to watch. And, and you'll watch sometimes um, a swimmer in the 500 chooses to just do very steady, consistent splits. They, they know they can, they can finish strong if they do 
a certain split, like if they keep it at a 27, which is a great split, by the way, in a 500. Um, some of them try maybe to, to go out at a 28 for their splits and then do something called a negative split where at the second half of the race they actually have faster splits. I've noticed that a lot of swimmers have a lot of adrenaline in the first 50, so sometimes that ends up being their, their fastest 50, which is understandable. Um, however, the best, the best way to handle that is to either do a steady split or to plan on negative splits. You want to make sure that you have enough gas in the tank for that, for the rest of the 500. Guys here are doing well, though. They are starting to separate a little bit. Looks like Cooper Wanderer is just splitting at 41.33. He's kind of gotten a little bit of about five yards ahead of Bodie Schaefer there, who did 42.52 for that 50. Cooper Larson, 45.02. Looks like Lincoln has got a 44.99. He's picking 89. I'm sorry, he's picking up the pace a little bit there. And Nick rounding us out in lane seven, 47.33. Sometimes when you're about halfway done, you're like, oh, I can do this. I swim, you know, on Mr. Luke's team, we swim sometimes 10,000 yards a day. This is just 500, that's just 20 lengths. What's the big deal, right? As I sit in my comfortable chair, watching the athletes. I can say this, because I used to swim the 500, but that was about 100 years ago. Cooper, still, Cooper Wander in lane five, still strongly in the lead here. Thirty eight sixty one or thirty nine sixty one. Look at who is speeding up. I don't know. We might have a new five hundred guy in JV. Nice job there, Bodie. Forty three seventy three. He's picking up the pace just a little bit too, but Cooper Wanderer just finished seventeen. He's on his eighteenth length. You're gonna see Marty at the end of Cooper's lane here, he's gonna ring the bell. The official always rings the bell loudly over the swimmer who's in first place so that the, all the swimmers in the field know where everybody is. That kind of lights a fire under the guy in first place. And the rest of them all try and hurry up to catch up. <laughs> Cooper's doing a great job. He's finishing his last 25 here. I one time talked Marty into letting me ring the bell. It was one of the best days of my life. I have very low ambitions. Nice job, Cooper Wanderer. Coming in first, 6.30.90. Excellent job. We got Bodie finishing in second, 6.46.15. These are great times for JV squad never having done this. It's pretty good. Cooper Larson is kicking on the look at that kick he's got at the end. Nice job, Cooper. He's gonna come in third here. 70651. Excellent job, Cooper. Give a sportsmanship. They're all congratulating each other from surviving. Lincoln Wanderer, 71055, fourth place. Nice job, Lincoln. Nick's gonna finish us out here. Seven twenty six eighty one. Excellent job, gentlemen. Next up, we've got the varsity heat of the five hundred. The fun keeps happening. Yeah. Swimming for Cretan Derham in lane four is Matt Baumberger. Watch for him. He is going to be a fun swimmer to watch. Lane three, Sam Loken, Stillwater. Lane five, Nathan Browning, Stillwater. And lane seven, Cameron Winters. I'm really interested to see how these ponies do. I 
I've seen Sam swim the 500 a couple of times. He does great. Um, Cameron is an excellent sprinter, as is Nathan. So we'll see what they can do here. Sometimes they surprise each other, or themselves, I guess, with what they do. I know I know uh, Baumberger of, of Crete and Durham is going to do great. I believe he has... He comes in in this event around a 518, which is phenomenal. Um, but notice, notice that Nathan Browning is trying to keep pace with them. That's going to be fun to watch. So sometimes these sprinters, I don't know how Cameron feels about it, but uh, one of my swimmers one time looked at the heat sheet and said, 500, she likes to do 50s. She always did a 50. And she came up and said, Coach, someone put, accidentally put an extra zero after my event. I thought that was pretty funny. However, she survived it. Um, she didn't like it. And I don't think I made her do it again. But sometimes sprinters surprise you. That's one of the reasons that both of these coaches are probably switching people up in these events at this point in the season. You never know um, a hidden talent that somebody might do. They might start off as 7th and 8th graders as excellent sprinters, but as they gain endurance and strength as they age, they might suddenly turn into distant swimmers or even or even an event that is completely different. Um, we had, a couple years ago, we had a swimmer who was one of our great freestyle sprinters. And then all of a sudden, about maybe a month before state, coach just switched it up and threw her in a, in a uh, breaststroke event. Well, nobody knew she could do breaststroke like that. She ended up making it to the state meet, and she had only really been doing the event for a month that year. So it's kind of fun at this time to not only switch up the events that they're in. Baumberger doing a nice job, 31-93 on that split. Nathan, excellent job with 33-78. Um, they switch it up at this time of year just because they do want to see if there's any they don't want to get them in a rut in their typical event, number one. Number two, they may discover a hidden talent that we weren't aware of. And also just sometimes mixing it up, just giving them that variety can also just galvanize them in their regular events for next time. Of course, Matt Baumberger is the kind of swimmer, 32-22. He's the kind of swimmer that you toss him in the pool again, he can do just about anything. He's an excellent butterflyer um, and a fantastic 200 IMer. What was interesting today is that um, most of the top 200 IMers from these teams didn't swim it today. So it was kind of fun to see some other guys, some other talents in there. Matt pulling away just a little bit from Nathan. Nathan holding his own there in second place. Sam is looking great. Sam is a ninth grader coming up strong. It's fun to see with the guys. Cameron Winter is solidly in third. The guys, they're so little when they're in seventh grade, it's really fun to see the growth that they get into by 12th grade. You don't even recognize them as swimmers. Another high point of entertainment for those of you watching the 500. I love watching the coaches and the random motions that they do. I see both the Cretan Durham and the Ponies coach doing these motions. I don't think anybody really knows what they mean, but they mean something to the coaches. 32.50 on that split for, for Baumberger. Nathan, 35.02. They're doing a nice job of holding their pace. Cameron is solidly in third place with a split of 36.95. He's holding a nice pace. Matt, 32.47. You see how Matt is doing those negative splits? He's getting a little bit faster there. 38.05 on Sam's split. Nice job from the ninth grader there. Nathan, 35.08. He is holding a very steady pace. Here comes the bell. Marty's ringing the bell from... Five yards out till he does his flip turn. So Matt knows he is firmly in first place. His split there is 32.75. Split by Sam, 37.45, and a 37 from Cam. 
Nathan. 35-33. Nathan is doing a really good job holding a very consistent split. We're going to watch Matt Baumberger of Creighton Durham coasting to an easy victory in this varsity event. And an excellent time, 517-09. Nicely done. Look at that last 50 split. He did a 31-73. Definitely had, definitely had enough juice in the tank to keep going. We're going to watch Nathan coming in second here. 534-43. Nice job, Nathan. Cameron is finishing up his last 25. In lane seven. Let's see what his time ends up. Nice job, 556.42. And Sam, 604.58. I think, I think that's a pretty good time for Sam. I think. I'm just pausing. I'm just pausing as Jane reads out the results of the diving event. Congratulations to our Pony Divers. Third place, Grady Flynn. Excellent job. Second place, Megan Kubacek. Great job. And first place, place goes to Tate Sorensen of Stillwater. He is so fun to watch. He's been a diver on the team since seventh grade. Lots of fun to watch. Great job, Tate. Up next, we have the JV heat of the 200-yard freestyle relay. This is, once again, just exclusively pony swimmers in this JV relay. Lane four, Cooper Larson, Nick Larson, Cooper Wanderer, and Lincoln Wanderer. In lane five, we have Bodie, Bodie Schaefer, who just finished up a great 500, Jack Howell, John Richardson, and Alex Lauer. This is the 200-yard freestyle JV heat. This event is each swimmer swims 50 yards, so it is a sprint. And it goes really fast, it's fun to watch. This is a second of third relays that you'll see tonight. Our final event is the 400 relay where each swimmer swims a 100. Nice, it looks like Bodie Schaefer warmed up nicely in that 500 and is finishing strong here in first. He's giving way here to Jack Howell. And Cooper finishing up here, giving way to Nick Larson entering the water. Um, Coach Luke does this quite a bit where you'll see a kiddo in the 500 and then you're shocked to find that just a, an event later he's swimming in the 50. But I always find that those kids who, who did the 500 end up turning in a really good time in the 50. It's like their muscles are warmed up and they're ready to go. Diving into the water for Stillwater B is John Richardson. And Nick is going to give away to Cooper Wanderer in lane four. Some really important things to note with a relay start. Obviously, the worst thing to do for a relay is disqualify. You definitely do not want to leave that block until some part of your teammate has touched the wall. You can wind up. You can start to push out. But that toe has got to be on that block until and unless your, your teammate has touched the wall. Well, it looks like Stillwater A is starting to give Stillwater B a run for its money. They're both kind of going into the water at the same time. Nicely done. Well, Stillwater, Stillwater A has put on a show. They've now passed Stillwater B. Swimming for Stillwater A. Cooper Wanderer, and B is John Richardson. Cooper is about to give way to Lincoln Wanderer, brother to brother. Nope, I'm sorry. I got those twins mixed up, I'm sorry. Sorry guys, I'm sure you're used to that. Lincoln finished up, Stillwater A 
taking first in the JV Heat 210-34. And then, I'm sorry about that, that was Alex, Alex Lauer in the water, a seventh grader, finishing up nicely, 219 for 86 for Stillwater Beef. Up next is the varsity heat of the 200 yard freestyle relay. We have two, two teams from, from Stillwater and two teams from Crete and Durham. This will be fun. Swimming in lane three for Stillwater, Cameron Winters, Nathan Volkman, Nathan Brownie, and Jackson Benson. Stillwater, I'm sorry, swimming for Creton Durham in lane four. Jack Kirschberg, Will Larson, Marcus Simmons, and Matt Baumberger. Stillwater is swimming in lane five. Jaden Peterson, Paul Hartman, Sam Loken, and Jonathan Stanton. And in lane six, Creton Durham has Owen Sargent, I Isaac Van Oostrum, Finn Doherty, and John Kovitz. And they're off. Look at those amazing starts. Fun to watch. This one is going to be a little bit tighter <laughs> and a little bit faster. It looks like Stillwater A is taking an earlier lead. We have Stillwater A is um, Jaden Peterson, who is an amazing captain and amazing swimmer. He just gave way there to Paul Hartman. Uh, looks like Stillwater B is in second, still, and Creighton Durham A in a close third. Interesting to note that for relays, the scoring is that only the top three relays earn points. You do not earn points for fourth place, and also only two, it doesn't, it's not really applicable here, but um, only two teams can score for each, I'm sorry, only two relays can score for each team. So if Stillwater, for example, had a third relay in the water, that would be exhibition only. Looks like Stillwater B catching up a little bit to Stillwater A. Fun to watch the inter-squad competition here. Creton Durham following a nice third. Oh, this is going to be a battle. Stillwater A, Stillwater B, who's going to win it? Creton Durham, don't count them out. Look at that. That is Matt Baumberger at the end, and as you know, he is fast. They better pick up the pace in Stillwater A and B if they want to win. Creighton Durham is making one heck of a race out of this. This is going to be close. Let's see who touches. It's all about arm strength. And it looks like Creighton, Bear Creighton Durham. Wow, that Matt Baumberger is a talented swimmer. The whole relay did a nice job. But Matt just came up right out of nowhere to first place. Excellent job to the Creighton Durham relay. 140.72. Stillwater B got second place, 140.99. So, I mean, we're talking two tenths of a second, separating one and two. Nice job with that. Moving on now to 100-yard backstroke. It looks like this is, once again, an all-Stillwater heat. It's going to be JV backstroke. Lane one, Alex Lauer. Lane two, John Richardson. Lane three, Noah Danker. Lane four, Peter Severson. Lane five, Jack DePaul. Lane six, Thomas Putnam, and lane seven, Liam Chow. Although Liam Chow is not there. Hmm. Spectacular. <laughs> as a mom, there's nothing more fun than standing in the broadcast and watching your son hurry as quickly as he can to get up in time for his event. Poor kiddos. These guys get really nervous. And when they are late for an event, that can really throw them off. However, he didn't miss the event, and that is very important. <laughs> and he goes, Liam's in the water, and we're ready to start this JV heat of 100 backstroke. And they're off. The backstroke start is kind of a fun one to practice, but it's a tough one to get right. It takes a lot of practice. Um, toe placement is important. You don't want to get disqualified if your toes are curled up over the lip. Oh, these ponies are sticking together. It looks like Jack, let me see. Jack DePaul and Peter Severson off to a really good start. Jack is in the lead. Jack is a junior from Stillwater. Touching first, nice split there. Did not, oh, I'm sorry, Peter 
37.80. And Noah Danker in second place. Or in third place. I'm sorry, uh, Jack's split did not register on that. Really important to note, it's important to count your strokes as you're coming from the flags. The flags are all exactly five yards from the end of the pool. So you have to really practice and know how close you are to the wall so you can roll over. You can do one freestyle pull. If you do any more, you get disqualified. Looks like a good finish here for the ponies. We got Jack DePaul in first place, 116.81. I believe that's a personal best for Jack. Jack Dale. Uh, second place goes to Peter Severson. Nice job, 119.39. Noah Danker, 120. Third place. Fourth place goes to Thomas Putnam, 127.93. And fifth place to John Richardson, 138.12. And it is, we've got Liam and we've got Alex in the water battling it out for, for sixth and seventh place. Looks like Liam's going to get six. Oh. Okay, touch the wall there. 156.91. I have to see, it's pretty important not to flip over on your stomach at any point. There we go, nice job, Alex. 210.41. Good job, ponies. Next up, we have the varsity heat of the 100-yard backstroke. This is going to be a fun one to watch. Cooper Wanderer, Stillwater in lane one. Eli Wilklar. I, I had it, Eli. I'm sorry, and I lost it. Lane two. Jackson Kogler, watch him um, to have a fast backstroke. Lane three. Jack Kirschberg, lane four. Jaden Peterson, also really quick on that backstroke. Lane five. Marcus Simmons, lane six. Jonathan Stanton, lane seven. And Jack Howell, lane eight. Watch the varsity guys as they do their starts. It's Look at the height they get and the depth in the water. That underwater in backstroke is so crucial. Um, if you pop up too fast, you're actually you're actually using more energy than you need. It's more efficient to swim underwater. Oh, you know what? I need to, I apologize. I read the wrong names for that event. I am so sorry. Like that does not look like Jack. That is Wyatt Ferdine out in front. Excellent job, Wyatt. He doesn't normally swim this event, um, but he is fast. I believe he swims this in about a 56-46. So watch him in this. So, yeah, I'm crushing it with the name. Sorry to all of you. So Wyatt, handily in first. Looks like Joey Reiner, who's a great freestyler. It's fun to watch him try backstroke. Joey's definitely in second place. Excellent job, Wyatt, 56-47. I believe that might be matching one of his better times for that. 101-19, great job, Joey. So battling it out, this is a little closer. So fourth place looks like it's gonna go to Owen Sargent of Creton Durham. I'm sorry, that's third place. Fourth place goes to John Kovetz. Fifth place, Avery Jackson. And Isaac Van Oostrom finishes out with sixth place. Nice job, gentlemen. Next up is a 100-yard breaststroke. It looks like we are doing a varsity heat. Once again, no JV in this, in this event. 100-yard breaststroke. All lanes are full. Lane one, Cooper Wanderer. Lane two, Eli Watt. See, I just got excited. I was reading the breaststrokers. Um, Eli is in lane two. Jackson Kogler is in lane three. Jackson almost never swims breaststroke, but he's an amazing breaststroker. This is going to be fun to watch. Jack Kirschberger. Um, Jaden Peterson, lane five. Jaden is an excellent breaststroker. That's his main event. Um, he's, this is going to be a fun race. Marcus Simmons, lane six. Jonathan Stanton, lane seven. And Jack Howell, lane eight. I had the names just in the event earlier, so... And they're off. Look at those beautiful underwaters. Underwater pull-out is a feature unique to breaststroke. It's 
too much fun to watch. The, I, I'm getting distracted. There's so much fun to watch. Look at how fast these guys are. So first you do breaststroke pull, followed by a big breaststroke kick, and then you surface. You can only do one of each. The timing and the pull and the strength is crucial. Swimming underwater is actually more efficient. I started to say this a little bit in the backstroke. Swimming underwater is more efficient than swimming above. You're conserving energy and you are more hydrodynamic under the water. So the more time you can spend under the water, the better. It's going to be a tight race between Jaden and Jackson. Fun to see these two good friends and teammates battling it out. Creighton Durham strongly in third and fourth, it appears. This one's going to come down to the end. Oh, looks like Jackson just edged out Jaden. 101.70. Jaden did a nice 102.51. Excellent job. Finishing in third. Nice job by Jack Kirschberg. 113.60. We have another Creighton Durham swimmer coming in. Fourth, Marcus Simmons. Looks like fifth place is going to go to Jonathan Stanton. 124.18. Sixth place to Eli, 128.67. Seventh place to Jack Howell. And eighth place to Cooper Wanderer. Nice job, gentlemen. So we're coming up on our last relay and second to last event of the evening, the, the 400 yard JV relay. This is once again an all still water JV heat. We have Stillwater A, Jackson Avery, Noah Danker, Jack DePaul, and Liam Chow. Hoping that he's there. Yes, I see him. That's good news. And in lane five, Bodie Schaefer, Peter Severson, Nick Larson, and Thomas Putnam. Remember that this is the 400. Each swimmer swims 100 yards. And they're off. In the water, we have Jackson Avery, an eighth grader, and Bodie Schaefer, a 10th grader. JV heats are so fun to watch because we start to see some of the younger talent really getting some experience. At this point in the season, even our new swimmers are starting to get the rhythm of the swim meets, understand the cadence of it, get comfortable, not as nervous, really start to see them shine. This is, this is tight. These two swimmers are neck and neck. Avery, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Avery just out touching Schaefer there for the 50. Now the second swimmer is stepping up on the block, so second swimmers should not mount the blocks until um, until their teammates have already completed their first 50. Looks like Jackson is going to reach the wall first, and he's going to give way to Noah Danker. Once Bodie touches here, he's giving way to Peter Sievens Severson. Noah is a 10th grader new to the team this year. We're really glad to have him. And Peter is a 9th grader returning from last year. And at the turn, they're pretty, they're pretty neck and neck. There's an interesting strategy. Coach Luke, of course, is amazing with these strategies. He's been doing this for 48 years. We've been forced so fortunate in Stillwater to have Coach Luke, as well as his talented staff and even more talented wife, Jane Luke, who's your announcer on the pool deck today, guiding our girls and boys swim teams for 48 years. That's incredible. And he was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame, along with Joe Maurer, I think a lot of us were interested to know, but we were not invited to that ceremony for some strange reason. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame. We're very proud of him. He is the winningest coach in the state of Minnesota. He has nicely done. I just want to highlight these amazing athletes diving into the water. We have Jack DuPaul and Nick Larson in the water now for the ponies. Mr. Luke has a, a dual meet winning streak with the girls. That is a record in the state of Minnesota. He took that record from his father, Elmer Luke. It was kind of a sweet moment when he beat that record and his dad could not have been prouder of him. 
And Jack DuPaul just finishing up his final 25. Followed by Nick finishing up here just about done with his 75. Diving in is Liam Chow over Jack. This is one of my favorite relays because I think the guys know that the end of the meet is near and the cheering gets very loud, which is fun as a spectator. As Nick finishes to the wall here, Thomas Putnam going in the water for ponies. Oh no. It's a bummer when you get those goggles knocked down, Thomas. Way to rally. Swimmers will tell you actually, the goggles coming off isn't the worst. The goggles going in your mouth and looking like a horse bridle, that's the worst because you can't see or breathe. Other than that, it's a great event. Liam approaching his 50. Flip real quick there. Thomas is doing a great job catching up. He's closing in on Liam and Stillwater A there as he finishes his final 50. This one's gonna be close. I see Thomas gaining. The good news is they both have their goggles on. <laughs> and Thomas has stolen the lead. Stillwater B in the lead. Both guys are fighting hard to the finish. And more importantly, these two guys are great friends on the team and they have a blast together. Tom is an excellent mentor for Liam, as he is for many of the other younger swimmers on the team. Nice job, Thomas, finishing up for Stillwater B, 503.28. Liam not giving up. <laughs> finishing up for Stillwater A, 518.32. Look at the handshake at the end. Thomas was even clapping and cheering for Liam as he finished. That's, that's sportsmanship. Our final event of the evening is the varsity heat of the 400 freestyle. freestyle. <laughs> we have two teams for, or two relays for each team. Lane three, Wyatt Ferdine, Joey Reiner, Cameron Winters, and Zach Cody. Lane four, Marcus Simmons, Isaac Vass Van Oost Oostrum, Jack Kirschberg, and Matt Baumberger. Watch that Matt, he's a, he's a sneaky anchor. We saw that in the last relay. Stillwater, Jackson Kogler, Paul Hartman, Nathan Volkman, and Jackson Benson are in lane five. And in lane six for Creighton Durham, Carl Steinhoff, Nate Lieber, Eli Wachlarowitz, I'm sorry, Eli, I tried, and Owen Sargent. You may notice that I get blissfully quiet when the announcer says quiet for the start. That's so that we don't have any distractions for the athletes. Unfortunately, there was a rather loud phone ringing. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of finger pointing in the, in the stands there. Looks like our Stillwater teams are out in front pretty quick, but you know that can change any time in this event. Touching first with a split of 24-41. We have Stillwater A, Stillwater B, 25-50, and 27.92 for Creighton Durham A, Creighton Durham B, 35.56. Just as a reminder, swimming in the water right now, finishing up quick is Wyatt Fredine for Stillwater B. Stillwater A is Jackson Kogler, who's just slightly in the lead. Jackson's giving way to Paul Hartman. And Joey Reiner is in the water in Stillwater B. It is a close race between these these two pony teams. Creighton Durham coming up nicely in third and fourth, respectively. As a reminder, in the relays, first place earns eight points for the team, second place four points for the team, and two points for third place. Fourth place, unfortunately, does not score. It might interest you to know that for the individual events, uh, places first through fifth score points. So first place gets six points, second place four points, 
Third place, three points. Fourth place, two points. And for fifth place, you get one point. So every point adds up. These pony swimmers are neck and neck. I think it's going to come down to the end here. In the water for Stillwater A, Nathan Volkman, one of our wonderful captains. And in for Stillwater B, Cameron Winters, an 11th grader and a wonderful sprinter. Did a great job, though, tonight in that 500. Creighton Durham in the water. Jack Kirschberg. Stillwater A and B. A2508 and B2707 for those splits. Here comes Creighton Durham. A split is 2851. Creighton Durham B. Finishing at 75. All right, now we've got the anchors in the water for Stillwater A and B. This is what it's going to come down to. In the water for Stillwater A, Jackson Benson. In the water for Stillwater B, Zach Cody. Zach is a ninth grader. Jackson's a tenth grader. Both are awesome kids. Super fun to watch. And, and really sweet. Isn't that nice? All right. Creighton Durham, A. Matt Baumberger, watch him. Look him turn on the gas. That's pretty fun. It looks like Stillwater A is gonna is gonna keep it. Cody's got to put on some serious wheels to catch up to Jackson. Cody's got it in the tank though. Look at him go. He's not giving up. Nice job, Jackson. Touches the wall. Stillwater A. 337.94, Stillwater B in second place, 340.09. Creighton Durham A coming in. Matt is fun to watch. Look at that split, 27.03. And the final time for Creighton Durham, that really did a great job, 350. We're just finishing up Creighton Durham B. Sorry, Owen, I didn't mention your name. Owen is in the water for Creighton Durham B, doing an excellent job finishing up. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Owen. Eli is finishing up here, and Owen is about to enter the water. Here we go, Owen. Nice job. Owen is starting as 25 of 100 yards. At the end of the night like this, you're going to notice both teams cheering. I think everybody feels that, what it's like to finish the event on your own, or even just be in the water on your own. It is something I wish you guys could really feel the energy in the crowd everybody's cheering swimmers parents both teams and this is something we see time and time again in swimming I feel like it's an individual and a team sport and so the guys really relate to each other whether they're on a teammate or a competing team they understand how hard it is and they are really encouraging Owen as he finishes up his last 25 Sounds good. Nice job, Owen, finishing out our meet. Still, or I'm sorry, Creighton Durham B, finishing at 513.41. Well, that's it. That's our meet. That was incredibly fast. I think the guys did a great job. We'll get the final score up here soon, but it looks like um, we're sitting right now 93 Stillwater. And our guest, Creighton Durham, thank you for coming, 68. So it looks like a victory for the ponies. Very proud of you. Everybody swam so great. All of these guys are talented athletes. Everybody's working so hard. This is a tough time of the season. Everybody's a little tired. We're sick of the snow. That might just be me projecting. But the guys are doing a really good job. And they have about seven weeks left to go. So they got to grind in, dig it out, make sure that they just keep their energy up and their momentum up. But this was a fun meet to do that. Everybody got to try something a little different. And um, we saw some cool races. We saw some new talent, I think. I think Coach Luke is going to... Is going to take note of some of these some of these athletes swimming races that they don't normally, and be really excited about that. So we want to thank you once again for joining us here on Valley Access. Valley Access, thank you once again for giving the opportunity to have our folks at home be able to watch a meet in the comfort of their own home. They're not sweating quite like me. Um, it's warm, so enjoy the chlorine-free um, environment, and it's probably cooler where you are, and you might be in your jammies. Good for you. 
thank you once again for coming and thanks again to Papa John's of Stillwater for, for sponsoring all of our Valley Access coverage for all of our pony sports. We're proud of you. Thanks again, hope to see you next time. Go ponies. Pony Sports.